The Flaming Lips music may get weird, but nothing is weirder than the fact that the band wouldn't have existed if Wayne Coyne hadn't been nearly murdered at a Long John Silver's. Coyne was born to Irish Catholic parents in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1961. His family was a big one, and he was the second youngest child in a house full of adventurous kids. Coyne said, Dad was a big alpha male worker guy. He was always the boss. My older brothers brought a lot of drugs, motorbikes, and music into the house. They played the Beatles and Pink Floyd, lying in the dark, getting stoned. Amazing. Coyne often found himself sketching and allowing his imagination to run wild, seeking magic in the mundane. He was also fascinated by music and everything it represented. He paid careful attention to songs from The Wizard of Oz and was drawn to Tom Jones's music as well. He said, Jones's early stuff was so dramatic, over the top. He sounds so intensely brokenhearted, suicidal. I related to that. I'm also over the top, always having to ask people I work with, is that too over the top? I'm lucky they can tell me, that over the top bit there is great, that over the top bit there is not. I'd rather feel things all the way. When Wayne Coyne was in high school and working at a Long John Silver's, he was held hostage at gunpoint at the restaurant. Coyne said the experience was life-changing, inspiring the song Mother, Please Don't Be Sad, a powerful track with hard-hitting undertones. He told Rolling Stone, Well, until then, I could probably say I didn't realize I was really alive. I never really thought about it. We were living such an insane, healthy, wonderful, happy life. My brothers and all of our friends just running around doing the craziest shit ever. But then I'm laying on the floor thinking, this is how I'm going to die. He added that he had a lot of anxiety back then over whether to join the family business or focus on his music, and the event gave him a whole lot of perspective. After being so close to death, he felt he had to follow his passion, changing the course of his life. As a teenager, Wayne became part of the local punk scene and felt motivated by the success of artists like Sonic Youth, Meat Puppets, and Black Flag, realizing that music was within reach. He decided to start the Flaming Lips in 1983 with one of his brothers, Mark Coyne. The duo could only afford cheap musical instruments at that point in time. It turns out the instruments they bought were such a bargain because they were stolen from a church, a fact that the brothers didn't know about until later. Mark ultimately left the band in 1985, and Wayne had to take over and sing without his brother's help. While the Flaming Lips had talented members, they didn't necessarily know where they were heading. The band went through several albums before somewhat finding their niche, getting the attention of Warner Brothers in 1990. They achieved recognition and tasted commercial success in 1993 with one of their songs, She Don't Use Jelly, and later explored their style as a band with the 1999 album The Soft Bulletin. Coyne said that as a band, they had their fair share of ups and downs, so they didn't overreact to commercial success. Becoming successful later in life turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Coyne said that by the time they hit it big, the band knew what their art meant to them and were comfortable enough with producing music that they knew what they wanted. He said, if you were talking to me and I was like 22 years old when all that happened, I probably would be a completely different type of person. The band consistently stayed true to their roots and haven't changed today. He explained that the band trusts their instincts instead of worrying about pleasing the masses with music that's trendy or in vogue. At the end of the day, it is just music and being in a band and art and stuff. It's, it's pretty harmless, really. Coyne lost his dad to cancer in 1997, an event that was sobering for the musician. He'd also lost his mom to the same illness and was no stranger to its trials and tribulations. The one solace Coyne found was in music. When his father was fighting cancer, Coyne often took respite in the songs he listened to. He said, I remember when my father was dying. I remember listening to Bjork and listening to John Coltrane in these things. And I don't know why, but music has the power to transcend your physical being and take you up just a little bit. Coyne said that the fact that music has a metaphysical aspect helps a listener to temporarily forget what they're going through and simply live in the moment. It's no coincidence that the Flaming Lips began developing their powerful album The Soft Bulletin around this time. Coyne told The Guardian, After my father died, I realized I didn't know if I wanted to keep knowing how brutal the world can be. He added that despite what he'd been through, he remained optimistic about life in the world, but that it needs conscious effort on an individual level to get through the bad times and see the good in the world. Coyne often explores existential questions through his music. One of the band's most iconic songs is called Do You Realize, which is a meditation on death and life. Coyne told Spin that he often spoke with fans about the song's meaning. He said that hearing his fans share their vulnerabilities had a definite impact on him, and they wanted his fans to open up to him. Coyne added that when fans told him he understands and gets where they're coming from, he knows it was never him but the music all along. It's like a piece of magic. It wasn't as though we really made it anyway. We just are the humans that get to stand here every night and sing it and take all the credit. Coyne said that one key to making this kind of connection with fans is keeping performances small and intimate. If you're playing for 60,000 people, a lot of them aren't going to know who you are. Coyne didn't just stick to the world of music and branched out into cinema years ago with his 2008 film Christmas on Mars. It wasn't an easy process. Coyne spent seven long years trying to finish the film because he kept getting interrupted by his commitment to the Flaming Lips and their album's successes. The band also spent around $200,000 from their own pockets to make the film a reality. 
Coyne also had to call several of his acquaintances for favors as he tried to give the film some momentum. Later, when he spoke about Christmas on Mars, Coyne said, I'm not sure if I'm embarrassed about it or if I'm proud of it. The film wasn't successful despite being talked about and receiving plenty of attention. However, the group did make an album specifically for the film that received better reviews. Coyne said his movie perhaps wasn't meant for a larger audience, explaining that Christmas on Mars isn't necessarily for everyone, as it's not entertaining so much as it's intense and emotional. Coyne lost people he knew to addiction, which made him think differently about drugs and alcohol, a shift in perspective that also showed up in his music. He told Rolling Stone that he and bandmate Stephen Drozd had spoken at length about how witnessing addiction in others had profoundly affected their lives. Stephen and I both talked about having these older brothers that we kind of vicariously lived through. We saw the way we wanted to live, we saw the way not to live. He said that both of them had survivor's guilt because of their experiences. Coyne saw several of his brother's friends get killed from drug overdoses and in road accidents. Coyne also spoke about his band's take on drugs as artists. He explained that their music didn't view drugs as life-altering or magical, but rather as an unavoidable part of life. Coyne said that Droz could relate to him and vice versa because of the common links from their past, which helped when they made songs about drugs and related topics. I think it's it's will always end up being a, uh, a destroying force in anybody's life and there's just no way around it. Life hasn't been smooth for Wayne Coyne and he knows it. He prefers to make sense of his emotions through music, turning inward for answers when he feels puzzled or lost. The band's 2013 album The Terror explored what it's like to be in pain and the experience of living through a heartbreak. The album sparked rumors that the songs were about Coyne's 2012 separation from his first wife, Michelle Martin Coyne. Understandably, Coyne wasn't too keen on discussing the details, saying, this music is really about a part of myself, a period, a time, a build-up to this time, but I don't like to think about that much because it's disturbing to me. The idea that we made this music, not because I needed to encompass that time, but now I know what that time was, now it haunts me. As a band, the Flaming Lips haven't always had it easy. After being fired from the band, former drummer Cliff Skurlock sparked controversy when he accused Coyne of verbal abuse and racism. In 2014, though, Skurlock walked back some of his comments in an interview with Pitchfork, saying instead that he felt Coyne simply didn't understand cultural appropriation or how it could have an impact on people around him. Skurlock added, Look, if I thought he was racist, I would say so. But I know that dude really, really well, and I can say in no uncertain terms that he is absolutely not a racist. Coyne, for his part, shot back at Skurlock through an interview with Rolling Stone. Coyne said that he loved and adored Skurlock, but felt that the drummer was immature and would lash out at everything. Coyne said, Anybody that wants to look at what he does with his Twitter, he usually is hating people, and I never thought about it very much. Coyne has often been called weird, and has also been called out for being unconventional, something that he has learned to celebrate in his own way. He said that while the Flaming Lips have always been unconventional, that wasn't a calculated move. Instead, they just went with their hearts without worrying about the status quo or whether people would find their music weird or odd. Coyne said, We're just drawn to what we're drawn to. One person Coyne has been drawn to is fellow musician and iconoclast Miley Cyrus, who has had more than her own share of scrutiny over the years. In 2014, Coyne told Tidal that contrary to how she has sometimes been portrayed in the media, Cyrus is lovely to be around and most people would adore her if they spent some time with her. I never get tired of defending her because she's awesome, and she understands as much as anyone that someone who perceives her image or reads the things written about her might misunderstand her. She is full of love and, and it's, it's, it's absolutely, you know, it's a thrill, but it's, you know, you, you gotta keep up with her, for sure. Coyne hasn't remained stagnant through the years, embracing change. He spoke to Rolling Stone recently about growing as an individual after his son Bloom was born. When asked how he was impacted by fatherhood, Coyne said, It's allowed me to know what's important and what isn't. I'm almost 60 years old, so I feel like I've had a good long time. Coyne says that he feels lucky to have had the chance to spend his life making music, and that he hopes his son Bloom will find his own way. Coyne explained that he believes most things in the world are a matter of perspective, saying, Two people can be standing in front of the sunset, and one of them just sees it as a waste of time. What are we standing here for? And the other one sees it as the greatest experience they've ever had. We're pretty sure we know which way Coyne sees it.